Stage 7 is the most sophisticated of all of the skills that stages will measure. It is the most independent of all the skills because it's writing. The research says that the more involved the teacher or advisor is in the writing process, the less it is the student's writing. So here we really need to look toward learner independence and that's why I separate it out as a separate academic skill area. In stage seven, we want to see that learners can master written communication. Of course, learners with any sort of a learning challenge, physical challenge especially, cognitive challenge, might use an electronic writing tool, such as a talking word processor or a, write, or a word processor that works with writing with symbols. We want to know that the learner can start to build on their written language convention skill sets. We want them to be able to read and write words independently without support. We want them to spell words correctly and we want them to compose with grammatical construct, appropriate and correct grammatical construct. We'd like to look for software for practice of these skills that provides auditory feedback that lets us massage the text size and color. Con certain combinations can make a bit big difference in some learners. And we would also like to find ways to support their writing with some sort of rate enhancement feature such as word prediction or word completion. Here are some IEP objectives. We want more, more, more. We'd like them to start with writing single words, but then we want those words to appear in sentences and then we would like those sentences or a story built with accuracy, grammatical, correct skill sets and a composition with accuracy and being able to apply the written language tools. Let's take a look at the assessment for written language. There are lots of steps in the writing process, as you might imagine. Let, I want to show you the settings one last time here. There is a little bit of a change for Stage 7 because we have text that we are working with and we want to allow for auditory feedback during the writing process. We will see settings for the text where we can decide what kind of a font, what size font, what color combinations we would like to use. We could also decide what voice the student is hearing. The rest of this is pretty much what you've already seen in terms of rewards, input method, so forth. First, we would like students to write words. We would then like them in the natural progression of a writer's ability to put those words in sentences. And then we would like them to combine those sentences into being able to write a complete passage, such as a story or a paper. But of course, there are subsets of skills underneath each of these areas. First, we want students to be able to copy words, but there are steps within that. Well, we need a word list. There is a little tip button here to give you the ideas uh, for what that word list might be. This comes straight out of the research for um, beginning writing. So we will start with words that are particular to a, a student's uh, personal life. But you can er certainly use topical words that are thematic from your curriculum. Actually, let's do that. Let's use vocabulary words for science activity. We need seed, we need water, we need soil, we need leaf, and you can imagine building an entire word list here. You would save that word list, open it back up again. They could be a generic word list for everyone in the class or a personal word list for each student. If there is a word that is not pronounced properly, let's say a student's name is Jose, we know that using phonetic approaches, if R-O-S-E is Rose and H-O-S-E is Hose, J-O-S-E might be Joe's. 
So we want to phonetically put that word in here so that when the learner sees and hears that word, it will be pronounced properly in the activity. We could even test our pronunciation decision here. The learner will never see this. He will only see this. But what's he going to hear? Let's test it. Jose. All right, that sounds pretty good, so we'll keep that. And then we'll go to the activities. Level one would be that they see and copy the word model with letter-by-letter -letter auditory feedback. Level two would be that they will see and copy the word, but they will only hear word-by-word -word feedback to see if they could correct themselves as they go. And level three would be that they hear the word, but they don't see the word. And they have to write the word with auditory feedback. This is a thinning out of the scaffolds for being able to independently write that word. We can randomize the way the words are presented for the learner. If the learner needs to use an on-screen keyboard, this is our way of, how it, of having switch users be able to scan for letters and write the words. And we can work with the learner and change the voice right here. Had we changed our our colors and font sizes, we could, um, we would see that resulted here. And let's go ahead and do that just so you can see the result. We'll pick the classroom font. We'll pick a medium size. We will pick yellow text on a blue background and return to our activity. And now this is the way the learner will be working. Here is an instruction screen for the learner. And because we want learner independence, here the teacher would stop and discuss exactly what the learner is going to do, show them how to use the speech buttons, so that, um, and we can click here to show them the example again, so that we can walk away or coach in a very limited fashion so that we're sure that the learner is writing independently. That's very important for a stage one learner. Soil. Now here is our word list appearing and notice we have the the um, simulated classroom writing line paper. I'll go ahead and get it right so you can see what happens. Oh, I, it's soil. We can listen to each word. Soil. Make sure we've got them right, and we can go to the next word. And if we've done the right thing, the computer will match these text strings and give us our reward. That's right. Jose. Now we have to do the next word, as you can see. What I'd like to do is skip out of this activity now so you can see the report. Each of the words that the teacher lists on the word list appear in the first column. The learner's response appears in the middle column so you can compare the two, whether or not he got it right and how many tries it took, and so forth. I'd like to say we're done here and go back to the activities and walk you through what those activities are. I just need to put something in the word list here so you can see. These are just the copy word settings again to review on the single word level only. We have to look again at those high frequency words that we considered at stage five. Could they read those ten high frequency words? We now have to know if they can write those ten high frequency words. Again these are 25 percent of everything a student will ever have to read or write so we want to put them 25 percent accurate ahead of the game. we have to have children fill in a blank word from each of the sentences. This is Ryan's photo album. The word is is missing, so we have to put that in. We have to write it ourselves and know how to spell it. Way to go. Oh, it has pictures from Ryan's birthday party. Gee, I missed what word I'm supposed to write, so I can listen again. There's another speech button here. Why? It has pictures from Ryan's birthday 
party. Oh, the word it wasn't there, so it must be that I have to fill that in. You can see how this one goes. I'll start this stage over again so we can get back into the activities. That was high frequency words just on the word level and we look at their ability to build rhyming words by changing initial consonants. That was all under the word level. Under the sentence level we can build sentences. Levels 1, 2, and 3 are grade levels 1, 2, and 3 just whether or not they can take words off of a word wall and build sentences. We look at their ability to edit their sentences. And here we collected writing samples from fifth graders from all over the country and found their spelling errors, their grammar errors, so forth, and wrote them into an uh, established list of errors that you could go ahead and use as is. If you don't care for these words, let's say your student misspells a different word, all you have to do is rewrite the sentence. This is my new sentence. But he doesn't spell the word new properly, so we're going to misspell the word. Now we'll put in the proper spelling. This is my new sentence. And the computer will look for this red one, but will pre present this one so that the learner has a chance to fix that error. Let me show you the error list or the editing list again. Homonyms, capitalization, noun verb agreement, pronoun use is a big one him likes ice cream instead of he likes ice cream. So again, the incorrect one is at the top. The one that we're looking for follows it so that the computer can compare those and give him feedback. I know lots of people who use the spelling one for their weekly spelling test. It's uh, wonderfully accessible and a good format for that. And then we look at their ability to be able to write a full sentence independently. You can see the definite progression first with words, then with sentences. After we can have established that they can do those things, we work toward making a story. Many children will say, well, what should I write about? So we put a collection of pictures in for you to pick from. If you have your own pictures, you can navigate over and pull in a picture that's more authentic for them to write about. But again, we've collected some pictures for you to pick if you would like to. I love this picture. Um, so we can start to write our story. And notice, I'm, the dog didn't do this, the cat did this. The dog doesn't want to get blamed. But notice that the uh, color combination and the font that we've already selected moves forward with us. If we continue to write more, a scroll bar will appear here. You have the ability to print this out with the picture and the words to give to the student so that they have a copy of the story that they've made. But when you say you're done, you get a report activity area that lets you score what the student wrote separately so that you don't mark all over their story. But it gives you um, the font size, the speech feedback pattern, that sort of thing, the color combination so that you can look at patterns and when they're more accurate. Again, you can save that, print that out, but you'd only get this text. You wouldn't get the text that you had before. So if you say you're done now, we get the similar navigation buttons that we've seen before. I'd like to go back one more time and show you first words, subsets of skills, then sentences, subsets of skills underneath, then writing stories. Stage 7 is a very involved and intricate peek at a student's ability in the written language areas. Stage 7.